Okay, let's go over the Commodore 65 hardware so we can see the uh, the main unit here and uh, the keyboard. So some of the familiar keys that we're used to. It's got tab and a few others added on, some of the sort of 128 kind of keys. Um, more function keys than you could possibly, possibly need. Oh, and a four-way keypad, which is uh, excellent with the cursor keys. No shift when you're going up through a directory, which is lovely. And uh, just back around and again and uh, out and have a quick look at the... Uh, the front loading three and a half inch floppy drive and uh, just come out and around and here's the uh, where the power and joysticks and power switch and reset is uh, resets on the left um, so you can do Commodore reset for 64 mode really easy around the back we have expansion port on the far right which isn't compatible with the 64 regular serial port for disk drives that is user port is the same as normal left and right audio that's new RGB video out is new, the uh, other video output doesn't really work properly and the disk drive port's empty on this one. Looking on the bottom we can see the uh, warranty seal which uh, funnily enough is broken because we've had to open it a few times. There's a trapdoor hatch on the bottom, a uh, blank warranty and serial number plate. And looking inside now we can see the uh, keyboard which is pretty much similar in uh, construction to that in the, uh, the Amiga 600 for example. We've got the ribbon connector which is a source of uh, breaks and problems from time to time. We've got the DMA chip, the CPU and left video chip on the right, 128k of RAM and four chips and here's the ID of the board and some of the people involved in the design of the 65. Uh, moving up past the trapdoor slot, we've got the uh, the oscillator and the two SID chips for uh, full stereo and there's a, a better view of them and across to the ROM which as you can see they were fiddling around the whole time with these. Uh, there's a floppy controller not the latest model in the 65, but unlike some of the later ones, it actually works properly. And there's the, uh, the Elmer um, power chips and around to the slot there for the uh, trap door. And there's the floppy drive. And we'll come out to the outside again. This is an adapter so you can use an Amiga monitor with 23 pin input so you get proper color. And there you can see the Commodore 65 up and running. And that's pretty much it for this one.